Hello and welcome to the Geographer's Craft. Um, the Geographer's Craft is a class at the University of Texas at Austin in the Geography Department. And this class explores a variety of qualitative and quantitative methods of analysis. For the first lab, we're going to be working with Microsoft Excel. And we're going to explore how we can use Microsoft Excel, which is a uh, database management system, um, to manipulate latitude and longitude of a file that we downloaded off of the internet. Now the file that we downloaded, for those of you in the course, can be found on Blackboard. And it shows you three different bits of information. The first piece of information that you're going to note is that you see what looks like a place name. I'll tell you right now that this is in Brazil, but that's not really important. What's important is that you have three bits of information, your latitude and your longitude. Now each one of these bits of information is separated, in this case, by a comma. This is what we're going to call a comma separated uh, file or a CSV. Um, it's a delimited sort of file so when we import this into Microsoft Excel we'll want to note that it's delimited and not set to a standard width. So when you open up the file it looks similar to this. Now this is just something you could type up in Microsoft Word or a um, plain notepad program. Now in order to make this lab work we're going to open up Microsoft Excel and we're going to learn how to import this data as a text file. Now usually when we open files in Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word we typically go to the file tab and just open a file. However in this case because it is a text file we're going to go to the data tab and this is how we're going to manage most of our data. So from the data tab we're going to get external data from text. So what I'm going to be looking for is the file that I already downloaded um, from Blackboard, which is border points. I'm going to go ahead and import that. Note that it says as a text file. Now remember that I just said there's two different kinds of files that you can download. There's fixed width, which assumes that each one of these characters, that one dash a r is associated with another um, number. So each one is a place. There's also delimited, which is what we're working with. Now that's when it's separated by a comma, a tab, or a uh, pipe, which I'll show you next. So we're going to click on delimited and we're going to go next. Note that I said earlier that these were all separated out by commas, so I'm going to um, deselect tab and hit comma. Now as soon as I hit comma, because it is a comma separated value, you note that it puts in the uh, rows or the column separators automatically. Now if I were to change that and change it to space, it puts in a row separator um, every time that there's a space. So I'm going to go ahead and change that back to comma and go next. Now when you're importing data, perhaps step three is going to be the most important part. Note that at the very top of each column it says generate. Now right now that signifies that it's any sort of numeric value um, will be converted to a number, date values will be converted to dates, and anything that's remaining will be just a general text file. Now, this isn't going to work for what we're doing today because we're going to want to separate out our degrees, our minutes, and our seconds from the latitude and longitude. So we're going to separate out the 10 degrees, we're going to separate out our minutes, which is 56 in this case, and then we're going to separate out <clears throat> our seconds. Now the point is, is that this data is represented in the um, degrees, minutes, seconds format. However, for importation into ArcGIS, we're going to want to have that converted to decimal degrees. Now, often you find data on the internet that isn't in a compatible geographic coordinate system that you need to be working with, so you're going to need to learn how to convert these. So as I said, you're going to want to convert those each file um, or each column from a general to a text column. The easiest way to do that is just highlight and click text. And be sure you do that three times so it's to your latitude and your longitude as well. Um, so now this is each different um, bit of information so then this whole latitude and longitude will be converted into text meaning that each individual place the negative, the one, the zero, the decimal point, the 56, etc is represented by a different place. So you can imagine that each one of those, so the negative will be one, place one, the one will be place two, the zero will be place three, the decimal point will be place four, the five will be place five, and so forth. Once those are converted, we can go to finish, 
and click OK. And this will be the beginning of the data we're working with. The best thing to do next is to label all of your columns. You can do that at the very top. I'm going to label column A as place. Um, I'm going to have my latitude, then I have my longitude. Now the remaining columns I'm going to separate out um, into my latitude just at the degrees, which will be 10, just the minutes, which is 56, and the seconds and fractions of seconds, which is going to be the 35 to 21. So I'm going to go ahead and label the rest of these columns as well. So lat degrees, lat minutes, lat seconds, and then I'm going to have this all reconstituted back together as just my latitude. And that's going to be in decimal degrees. I'm going to do the exact same headings for my longitude. It's going to be longitude degrees, longitude minutes, and longitude seconds. And then finally, we're going to put that all back together as our longitude degrees, decimal degrees. Now there's going to be one last column that we're going to add, and this is going to be our OID, or object identification. Essentially, this is going to be for ArcMap's internal housekeeping later on when we um, import these places into ArcMap. So, in order to separate out our de degrees, our minutes, and our seconds, we're going to need to use a formula. And it's on your handout, if you look at it. Um, equals value mid. Now, the mid function that we're using in Microsoft Excel, it extracts a substring from a string. And now we can start at any position we want. Essentially what that means is we need to choose which column we're going to be using. So where it says mid text right here, that's going to be which column we're going to start with. So in this case, it's going to be B2. Now the next part of the function is which number do you want to start with? Now we want to extract the 10 so that we show just our degrees. And so that's going to be the negative is place 1 and the 1 for the 10 is in place 2. So our starting position is going to be place 2. And then the number of characters that we'll be taking from this string is 2. We're going to take the 1 and the 0. We're going to close that formula up, and we're going to get just 10. Now, in order to drag this down so you don't have to copy this um, formula um, hundreds of times, you can highlight your box and drag your crosshairs over the little square in the bottom right-hand corner and drag that all the way down to the bottom. It should give you all of your degrees. Now, now we'd just like to double check that our degrees in our column D matches up to the degrees in B2. We're going to use a similar function, the mid function, um, to extract our minutes, which is going to be 56. So if you're counting, that's going to be starting with place number 5. So mid is going to be um, our start position will be B2 as well. We're starting with the fifth. Um, place, which is where the 5 is. Once again, we're going to take two places. Let's double check. Once again, the latitude minutes is up to 56, as well as um, our latitude in column B. Now, for column F, we're going to be working with our seconds and fractions of seconds. This becomes a little bit more complicated, because 3521 in column B is going to be our um, seconds and fractions of seconds. In order to convert this into decimal degrees, we're going to want to convert those seconds and fractions of seconds into a decimal number. So our um, formula is going to be just a little bit, but essentially it's going to follow the exact same thing that we've been doing, but we're going to insert a decimal point in between the 35 and the 21. So equals value mid. Um, our string here is going to be fairly, where our starting place is once again B2. We're going to start, in this case, our 3 is going to be at place 7. We're going to take two digits. And then we're going to add a period. So essentially this is saying, is saying, and before you extract the 21, put a decimal place in between those two um, functions so that you have your seconds and fractions of seconds. And then it's going to be mid same function, B2. We're going to start with our ninth place, and we're going to take 2. So that's going to take D21. Now close that up. You can tell if it's closed up if you have the colors matching up on your um, parentheses. And then double check. Once again, I have the 3521. 
So now when we reconvert this into decimal degrees, what we're going to do is we're going to use these three separate bits of information, our degrees, our minutes, and our seconds, and we're going to reconstitute that into decimal degrees. So equals value. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take column D2, which is our degrees, so type in D2, that's 10. Um, we're going to add, we're going to add, maybe, we're going to add column E2, which is our minutes. We're going to divide that by 60 because there are 60 minutes in a degree. And we're going to add to that column F2, which is going to be our seconds and fractions of seconds. And we're going to divide that by 3600 because there are 3600 seconds in a degree. And we're going to close that all up. Note that if I just hit enter now, it's going to give me a positive number. So that's going to be telling me that that's in a different hemisphere. So what we're working with is the um, southern hemisphere. So we're going to want to be sure that we make this a negative value. Now there's a couple of ways. To, one way to do that is to, is to take the sign of the value. So I can type in here sign of the value of B2 is the column we're working with, and I can multiply that entire thing times my formula for decimal degrees. Now, what that's saying is that take the absolute, whatever is in column B2, whether it's negative or positive, keep it negative or positive in column G. So note that I hit that and it becomes a negative number. Alternately, if you're only working with one hemisphere, you can just multiply everything times a negative one. So we're gonna have our formula there and multiply that times a negative one. And that should also give us the negative number we're looking for. Now, if you look over at the latitude in B1 or B2 and compare it to G2, which is our formula for our decimal degrees, you have a slightly different number. Now, the reason for this is that decimal degrees and degrees, minutes, seconds, vary slightly on um, how the actual location is displayed. However, it's going to be the exact same location. So when I'm done with that, I'm going to drag all these down to the bottom to complete this. I just want to be sure that they all look kind of similar. So the degrees, minutes, and seconds should match up exactly from your column B2. And then your deg decimal degrees for your latitude should look fairly close. Um, if it's way out of the ballpark, then you might want to go back and recheck and see what you could have done wrong. Also, note that there are, um, in column B, uh, or the record in B26 is negative 10.0000. Now, if you've imported that, that file and all you get is negative 10, you're going to get a lot of errors. That's because it's converting the negative 10.0000 to an actual numeric value. Now one easy way to differentiate whether you're working with a text or a numeric value is looking at your um, different columns. If it's aligned to the left, such as right here, um, it's aligned to the left, then you're generally working with text. Now contrary to that, if, you're, if it's aligned to the right, like this, you're generally working with a numeric value. So keep that in mind if you get a bunch of errors, you're going to have to re-import your data and be sure that you convert both your latitude and longitude from general to text. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for longitude, except the same formulas, except for we're going to extract it from a different column. So for our longitude decimal degrees, or longitude degrees, we're going to be extracting it from uh, column C2. It's going to be 2, 2. We're starting at the second place and taking two values. And once again, double check, 69 and 69. Our longitude minutes will be just almost exactly like the one we were work like the latitude that we were working with earlier. So we're gonna start in C2. We're gonna take uh, five and take two different digits. Once again, 31 matches up to our 31 minutes in C2. And then um, column J, which will be our seconds and fractions of seconds. I think I have an extra parenthesis there. And it's going to be C2, 7, 2. And we're going to insert a decimal place. Just 
just like that. And then C2, 9, 2. And this should give us our seconds in fractions of seconds. So 9.28. We're going to reconstitute that just like we did with the latitude. So equals the sine of the value. We want to keep that negative. <clears throat> and it's going to be H2, which is our degrees, plus um, I2 divided by 60, 60 minutes in a degree, and then divide J2, so our seconds and fractions of seconds, by 3600. Now, if I close that all up, it should give me the correct value. So my formula is not quite correct. I'm going to go back up here and change that. So it's the sign of the value of, I forgot to insert my column that I'm working with. So I'm working with C2. I'm going to be sure to multiply all of that. So now that should give me a function that gives me my decimal degrees of my longitude. Now the very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add that object identification number. As I said, that's just for ArcGIS's internal housekeeping. Now the best way to do that is to create a pattern. So I'm going to, in each one, each different record, I'm going to type in one, two, three. And holding the shift button, I'm going to highlight the first, the first cell and the last cell. So they're all highlighted and then go to that little box and drag it all the way down. And this is repeating that same pattern of increasing by one every time until the end of my files. Um, so that is actually the complete lab that we'll be working with today. So just to a little recap, um, most files that are, you find off the internet are stored in a format that takes up the least amount of room as possible. Generally, this is a text file, and we'll look at, take a look at that text file again, where <clears throat> things are either separated out by a comma, a pipe, a semicolon, or a tab, or they're actually fixed width columns. Um, this, in this case, is a CSV, or comma separated values. You can tell by the commas that are separating each of your different um, columns. We learned how to download that and then import that into Microsoft Excel. Remember, we're importing a text file from the data tab, and we're going to get external data from um, text. And that's how we're going to import text files. Now, then we'll choose whether it's separated by commas, or if it's separated by pipes, or colons, or semicolons, or if it's just a fixed width file. And we're going to convert everything into a text file so that nothing is converted to numeric. Once that's done, we can learn how to separate out using the mid function in Microsoft Excel, our degrees, our minutes, and seconds, and reconstitute that back into decimal degrees. Thanks for watching, and Enjoy the Geographer's Craft 